welcome to our uh, power quality improvement technique uh, program on NPTEL. We shall continue with the overview which was discussing in previous class. So now we will talk about the SAC and the DIBs. We have already defined the SAC. Now we shall little bit elaborate a different kind of SACs. So as we have mentioned that SAC is a decrease of the voltage between 0.1 to 0.9 PU per unit in RMS value of the current at the power frequency and during the period of at least 0.5 cycle. Then you will consider we will consider this entry to be uh, SAC and till one minute. If it is consisting of longer than one minute, you can take it as an interruption. And the causes of the voltage SAC is associated with the fault smelly energization of the heavy, heavy load, starting of the large motors. These are, you know, the starting current of the induction motor is very high. For example, here we shall first show you this is a per unit voltage. Here, the uh, all of a sudden we have a single line to ground fault and thus voltage has been sacked and thereafter it has been recovered and this is the voltage profile. So this is RMS value and this is the waveform during the sack that till that point you know it was healthy. So thereafter there is initiation of the sack and then it has been corrected here. So from this point onward, so corrective action was taken. So you can see that this is the picture. So this phenomena has been categorized as a sack. Similarly, we shall illustrate another figure that illustrates that effect of the large motor starting an induction motor will draw 6 to 7 times of its full load current during the startup and due to that the voltage will fall. You can see that this is the moment volt current uh, voltage uh, motor has been started. So, there will be a fall in the voltage from 100 percent to 80 percent and gradually it will reach the value. This is the time scale is in second. As shown here in this case a voltage sacks sacks immediately to the 80 percent and then gradually returns after its normal value and after 3 seconds. So, this is the case here where voltage sack may occur. So, based on that uh, different kind of sack. So, note that difference in time frame between these sacks due to utility system faults that has to be categorized. So, sack durations are subdivided here into three categories such as instantaneous uh, sacks that is for 0.5 cycles to 30 cycles and momentarily sacks that is for 30 cycles to the 3 seconds and the temporary sacks that is for the longer duration this is for the 3 seconds to 1 minutes. So, this is something you will categorize. Similarly, the voltage built up it is said to be the soil. A soil is defined as a increase in voltage between 1.1 to 1.8 per unit in RMS voltage or current at the power frequency for the duration of minimum 0.5 cycles to 1 minute. Soils characterized by the magnitude of the RMS value and also the duration same thing, but instead of the 3 minutes we can allow only 1 minute. So, cause of the soil it will be associated with the system faults. So, once you got a system fault and you have open up a line there will be open circuit case, open circuit case will reflect back the wave and thus it may cause high voltage and energization of the large capacitor bank that is also a cause. So, we discussed in the fax devices how to energize the capacitor bank uh, otherwise 
because you have to start you require to see that the capacitor voltage return capacitor voltage and the supply voltage is same then only you are going to switch it on otherwise it gives a transient and this transient if it is not undamped then it will cause a sustained oscillations of high voltage and just reverse we have seen that switching on the large load and it can be a soil because of the switching off large load once all of a sudden you switch off so voltage will build up similarly uh, we require to see and identify the severity of the voltage soil during a fault condition as a function of fault location where does it located where the open circuit occurs fault system impedance and the ground impedance here for example instantaneous uh, voltage soil caused by a single uh, line to the ground fault in other two line so all of a sudden there is a uh, there is a distortion and thus you can see that voltage has swelled then it has again sacked this phenomena occurs to other healthy line in case of the single line to ground fault. So, another is that negative sequence due to the unbalance, that negative or the zero sequence, zero sequence present only in three phase 4 OS system in a distribution network, otherwise zero sequence is absent. We shall discuss in detail about the zero sequence component and the negative sequence component in shunt active power filter. Uh, you can refer back that lectures once it uh, once it has been delivered to you. So, zero sequence voltage in a power system is generally results from the unbalanced loads causing negative or the zero sequence current to flow. So, voltage unbalance equal to 100 percent into maximum deviation from the average voltage by average voltage or you can take RMS voltage also where the average voltage is equal to sum of the voltage in three phases. So, generally we have some condition of fault tolerance single load on a three phase circuits we should have a negative sequence less than 2 percent that we accept. The result of uh, result of blown fuse in one phase of the three phase capacitor bank this may cause a severe unbalance and when it is the capacitor bank it may blow out the fuses and severe unbalance that is more than 5 percent can result from the single phasing condition that I will show that how even the typical single phasing conditions also can be mitigated by the shunt active power filter. So, recall this lectures this condition there. So, we are showing that V0 by V1 and V2, this is the case of the unbalanced voltage in percentage in residential feeder of date wise and you can see that this is the hour wise, this amount is a 24 hours. Once there is a peak, there is a two peak in India. Uh, generally it is in morning and 8 to 10 am and it is after 6 to 9 pm. So, for this reason you can see that both this peak when the peak demand is more also unbalanced also going to be more and this is a case of the feeder of two feeder V0 by V1 and V2 by V1 for the residential figure. So, this is the way it changes over the time span while you have an unbalanced load into the distribution system. So, let us define those waveform distortion. It is defined as a steady state variation from an ideal sine wave of power frequency principally characterized by the spectral content of the deviation. So, you can have a spectral analysis 
and you see that whether you got a fundamental that is all. If you are getting a fundamental it is fine. Otherwise, there is a five type of wave uh, distortion. This is DC offset. Generally, it presents when your positive area and the negative area does not message. So, you have some average value. There are harmonics. You once you have a nonlinear transformation from AC to DC, then in AC side, then it will be injecting the harmonics. So, for this, and there are different kind of harmonics. So, a special type of harmonics are called interharmonics that we shall discuss in detail and what is the effect of it and why it is a arises into the system. There are just notch and noises. Noise can be white band noise and other noises that can present into the system. DC offset, the, the presence of the DC offset voltage or the current are as an AC power system term as a DC offset. You mean to say you can feed a DC voltage thereafter you can have a AC. So, resultant will be this. So, this is that this amount is a DC offset or you can have a positive area and negative area mismatch. Then also you can have a DC offset. Generally, it happens when you have a triggering pulses are not same and you require to compensate that with a within the time. Generally, DC offset can be eliminated by properly switching the thyristor based devices and keeping the positive area and the negative area same. The harmonic, this is something a most dominating entity in the power quality. Harmonics are sinusoidal voltage or current having frequencies that are integral multiple of the frequencies at which the supply system designed to operate. IEEE standard 51910, this is basically the 1992 standard, further standard has been elevated, provide guideline for the harmonic current and the voltage distortion level on the distribution and the transmission circuit. This is generally a research uh, guideline, but they have a separate guideline for and a separate gate for, for the different country. But generally it adhered to the IEEE standard. Thereafter, periodically distorted waveforms. So, that is something a very important distortion phenomena can be noticed, can be decomposed into the sum of the fundamental frequency and the harmonics. That is, you can have uh, this waveform, this is a square wave waveform, it is not distorted, but it is, you can say that distorted sine waveform and that can be split it into the sine and cosine component and with its corresponding harmonics in a Fourier series. Harmonic distortion originates in nonlinear characteristics of the device and loads on the power system. Once you have a diode based rectifier, thyristor, AC to DC converter, all will cause harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion level are described by the complete harmonic spectrum with magnitude and phase angle of each individual harmonics component. So, we will split like this. Now, few term which you are familiar with for a long time, but we just sake of recall we are describing here. These are total harmonic distortion THT as a measure of the effective value of the harmonic distortion and THD is a one of the prime criteria in power quality. It is used to characterize both current and voltage waves. However, THD refers distortion of the voltage wave sometime if you take talk about the voltage THD. And we shall next figure illustrate the waveform of the adjustable speed drive. This is something which you will see that we have a diode based rectifier followed by a capacitor then a adjustable speed drive. 
So, you can see the few things. So, that is the maximum voltage is this, minimum voltage is this, average is this, RMH is this, form factor is this and you can have a frequency of 60 hertz, fundamental value is 19 point something, THD here you will find it is more than 8 eight times more than the standard applicable value that is 41.41 percent and RMS value is definitely uh, of uh, this 7.9 and RMS is 21.1 and TIF is the 72.5 factors. So, this is the fundamental thereafter this will come generally does not come it is coming due to the your quantization error of your uh, of your of, of your sensors and generally these uh, are very negligible and it comes due to the noises. So, this is essentially a fifth harmonic this is a essentially seventh harmonic thereafter you have a 11 and 13 harmonic and so on. This will be the harmonic spectrum for adjustable speed drive. So, the total harmonic distortion according to the IEEE 519 sets a limit of the total harmonic distortion for the utility side of the meter. It is restricted generally 5 percent. Utility is responsible for the voltage distortion at the point of the common coupling that is we will abbreviate as PCC in our further course of action between the utility and the user. The total harmonic distortion is a way to evaluate the voltage distortion effect of injecting harmonic current into the utility system. So, it is the cause of the nonlinear load. Your voltage may be fine sinusoidal, but your current has got a distortion. So, the total harmonic distortion of RMS of the harmonic current, it is RMS value of the fundamentals by 100 percent. So, we can define as IH equal to except fundamental, it is I2 square plus I3 square and so on and THD it can be represented by 100 percent that has been shown or otherwise this is the amount of the harmonic. So, that can be defined as a harmonic. For example, I am giving you one example. The find the total harmonic distortion of the voltage waveform with the following harmonic pickup. Generally, what happen you may have a source and you will have a source inductance mostly because you feed it with the transformer and all and that all has a leakage reactance and transmission line itself is inductive. And thereafter when you have a diode with rectifier and thus you have a current that is fundamental there are ter fifth, seventh, eleven, thirteen. And if you have four three phase four wire system then also the third harmonic. And that also once it current flows the third harmonic current flows to the inductor that gives to the this voltage. Fifth harmonic current once it flows through this inductor it goes to this fifth harmonic voltage and so on. So, let us see that this is a way to calculate it is very easy. So, so VH will be under root of 4 square plus 2 square plus 1 square plus A. So, this will be your voltage harmonic. So, voltage TSD you can define it as 4.82 by 114 into 100 that is 4.23 percent is your voltage THD and it is some extent acceptable. Now, total demand distortion this is something you may not come across very easily this is a commercial term we use sometime in utility. So, 519 IEEE 519 also sets the limits uh, of total demand distortion that is that is for the 
end user meter. So, wh how much demand you want and how much distorted power factor you get. So, this is something the RMS of the harmonic current by RMS value of the meter load current into the 100 percent. So, this is we require we say that as a TDD. So, sometimes it is also important. So, how much meter current I am getting? It may be actually not unity power factor, it may be some other power factor. So, all has to be taken into the account. It is expressed in percentage of the rated load current because that is what we are aware of. Because once we have chosen a meter that based on the KV rating, but since voltage is fixed, so ultimately your load current is something that varies. If you take a 3 kVA meter, so your load current is limited to uh, uh, limited to around 15 ampere. If you are taking a 6, uh, 6 kVA meter, load current is around 30 ampere. So, these are all single phase currents with a, some amount of tolerance. So, thereafter after 6 kV we generally have a 3 phase current, uh, 3 phase meters. So, there also we have to take into this account. So, TDD that is the that is the new entity we will come across and the utility speaks does not speaks about the THD. Utility generally speaks about the total demand distortion. You demand this much, I fit this much of the distorted power. Deals with the evaluating the current distortion caused by the harmonic current to the end user facilities and all these legal uh, implications are with the TDDs. So, what is TDDs? It is basically har harmonic current by the demanded load current. Where, so if you are not taking the your full load current, if your harmonic content is more, then you cannot penalize your utility or take a legal action against it. But if it is reverse, then you can, of course, if when you are drawing the full load current, then you it will be measured at the full load current. So, that is we say I L equal to the RMS value of the maximum demand load current and this is a harmonic content and I H is the RMS of the harmonic current except fundamentally. So, let us come into the new entity that is called interharmonic. So, interharmonics is a new entity and it happens you know uh, we will we, you know that we have a 50 hertz and generally if you go to USA you have a 60 hertz and maybe you have taken a device from an imported device from the USA which is carrier frequency is 720 hertz. So, that is quite acceptable because it is basically the it is a harmonic of 60 hertz, but it is not harmonic of 60 hertz, it will be interharmonic of the 60 hertz. So, same devices once you try to run in to the 50 hertz system, then you will have this problem. So, what happened? The voltage or current having frequency component that are not integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. These are called the interharmonics. 720 hertz is not integer multiple of 50 hertz. So, once you run it, you just try it out. You run a, uh, you take a switching frequency of a simple PWM inverter three phase with 720 hertz and your modulating frequency is 50 hertz and try to see in MATLAB simulating what spectrum you are getting. And if you make just 13 times of it, generally we advise to have odd numbers uh, of the 15 hertz. So, and see that what is the change difference of the change you are making. And that is something you will observe a very interesting phenomena and there this interharmonic you will you will be introducing 
if you take the switching frequency at all 720 hertz. If it is present, it is very difficult to eliminate and sometimes it rises to the subharmonics because ultimately your your uh, your power system is the low pass filter. Thus, high frequency does not have much problem. More uh, it will eliminate the low pass element. But due to the interharmonics, sometimes low frequency comes into the picture, subharmonics. So, then you have a lot of problem to eliminate them. So, we try to, we generally do not use the interharmonics while choosing the PWM and all. If it is arises, then it is very nasty element and eliminating this entity is quite difficult. And what is the source of this waveform? Static frequency converter, matrix converter. Matrix converter, uh, we, it converts, if it is, if you are converting to 50 hertz, uh, if you are, con uh, generally we have, uh, generally we can have a wind energy conversion system for and their wind speed varies. It may be 11 hertz to 20 hertz. And except 25 hertz, all the all the inputs are not integral multiple of the 50 hertz. Then what will happen? Then it leads to the some extent the interharmonics into this output of this waveform. 50 hertz and, and if come sometime if it is not properly tuned then this will raise to the interharmonics and thus cause the low frequency after filter you can filter it out the high frequency part thereafter you will find that low frequency part is present. So, this is a one of the detrimental issues in the power quality problem once you are converting to or you are having a VYF control, then also this case arises by the matrix converter. So, same way for the cyclo converter, cyclo converter for the little higher power devices because it is an induction furnace and arc devices, this may lead to the interharmonics. Thereafter, you come to the notches. The notching is a periodic waveform disturbance caused by the normal operation of the power electronics devices. When current is commutated to one phase to another, that it can be seen quite well in case of the most of the converter. And once it goes to this phase to once after 60 degree a pair of thyristors is conducting then it will switch over to the another pair of thyristors. Each of the case will gives you a notch. So, this waveform if it is there we require to eliminate the notch that is also the comes under the purview of the power electronics. And also, we require to eliminate it by the power quality. Thank you for your attention. I shall continue to the, uh, or the overview. I require another two classes to capture the holistic view of the power quality. In next class, I also continue with this uh, different aspect of the notches and power quality issues. Thank you.